Today, I want to talk about something we don't always talk about, the cost of owning a watch and watch servicing, which is kind of the not sexy side of watches. <laughs> but it is something you really do need to think about when buying a watch. So this is my personal Cartier Tank Solo that I have just gotten back from Cartier after its first service. So it came back in this pretty red pouch with all the documentation. Look at how good she looks now, yes. And, and then this is what it looked like when I first sent it off. Ooh, she's seen better days. <laughs> I've had this watch for five years now, so it was due in for its first service. The servicing interval on these is every four to five years. If you're a bit newer to the watch world, this is something you should always find out before you buy a watch. If it is brand new, ask how frequently this watch will need to be serviced. Five to six years is pretty average, I'd say. I'd ask what the cost is. Your authorized dealer should be able to answer this for you. And decide if it is still something you can afford. Some watches have insanely expensive servicing costs, but that's more when you get into the upper echelons of watchmaking, especially from independents, like Richard Mille or a crazy Urwerk. Looking at a higher horology brand like Patek Philippe, a non-complicated Patek service is about 1,000 pounds or 1,300 US dollars. A simple complication Patek is about 1,300 pounds and so on and so forth. I'll put the little chart up here. If you're buying secondhand, find out anything you can on that last servicing. When was it done? Who did it? Is it still under any kind of warranty? With my Cartier tank, this is a very entry-level Cartier, so stainless steel, quartz-powered movement, and as you can see, I wear this watch a lot. I have scratched it up a lot. Along the bezel, the bracelet has seen better days. The whole, the whole watch has seen better days. The cabochon is just gone. <laughs> so I lost that back in 2020. The whole watch was just an absolute state when I sent it off. So I wanted a full service. I controversially requested a polishing and for them to remove all scratches where possible. Now, a lot of watch nerds will say never polish your watch because it can affect the secondary market prices. It can be a little bit less desirable for someone who's buying it next. And a lot of people want to keep those scratch and dings, those little memories they've made with their watch. Now, I'm not anti-polishing. For me, it depends on the watch, the style of watch, and if I want it to be returned to me looking brand new, or maybe just have the movement servicing. For me, personally, my Cartier is my special occasion dress watch. It's the watch I pull out when I want to look fancy or for a special occasion. So I wanted to restore her to her former glory. I wanted her to shine and sparkle. I don't want it to be a scratched up rugged watch. I want it to be my pretty watch. So I opted for the polishing, but I wouldn't do that with all watches. Like say if I was bringing my Rolex Daytona in to be serviced. That's one I wouldn't want polished. I liked it. I like it a little bit scuffed up. I like the memories and marks I've made with it. So Cartier has sent us a detailed list of what they've done and mine received a quartz movement upgrade, get in, and a crown replacement. You should receive some kind of warranty afterwards as well. So this has a 24 month international warranty and next service will be in another five years time. If you think this is a watch you're gonna sell in the future, Always keep all of your servicing documentation for the next owner. These are things they're going to want to know. When was it serviced and by who? How long does a watch service take? It varies so much. It all depends on watch manufacturer and how complicated your watch is. There's a lot of brands still recovering from COVID-19 backlog and then some are quite quick. It also depends on the watch itself. If it's a highly complicated piece, Yes, it will be a longer wait time. If it's something relatively simple like my tank, it's short. So there are a lot of variables here. I can only speak for Cartier and the experience I've just had. They have an exceptional reputation, a really, really good reputation, and my experience was awesome. So we dropped this off with our authorized dealer on March 22nd, 2024. It was finished on April 24th and back with berries as of May the 1st. So altogether, it was about five weeks which is nothing. I've heard horror stories of people waiting a year, sometimes over a year to get their Omegas back, which is unthinkable to me. Hopefully they've sorted out some of their COVID backlog. That's the only thing I could think of that being. And last but not least, price. Price matters. So how much does it cost to get your watch serviced? 
As I've already said, it really does vary on brand, complication, movement. Altogether, mine came to 341 pounds. God, look at that VAT. It doesn't matter, Brittany. It doesn't matter. Don't be cheap. And yeah, there's a line item breakdown here. So the service itself was 265 pounds. The crown was 51.90. The polish was complimentary and 25 pounds postage. I personally don't think that's bad at all. So I now know the cost of ownership for my Cartier tank is every five years, it'll cost me 300 to 400 pounds. We'll see if inflation plays ball. That's all in theory right now. <laughs> Honestly, I have a really hard time finding anything bad to say about Cartier. Stand-up brand, fantastic watches, and, and a great servicing. Servicing is one of those things that no one enjoys doing. No one likes doing this, but it is a part of watch ownership. One of the things so many people love about their watch is the mechanical side. They are these little machines that we wear on our wrists that quite accurately measure the fourth dimension. It's insane. It's insane that we can own these. But like all machines, they need servicing. So make sure you keep up with it. But anyways, this was just a quick different video from me updating you guys on my tank and why you might see the cabochon back on it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And now we're going to thank the gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful Pope Tier patrons. Ooh, ooh, thank you patrons, my camera's trying to die on me, but I can't let it die before I say thank you, Pope to patrons. Thank you all to your patrons, thank you every single patron ever, but special thank you to the names on the screen.